Over the years, I've built many sets of oars, mostly for the Toledo Wooden Boat Show, where I build five to six pairs of oars uh, for the people that are constructing the elegant punt. I've had a lot of requests for information about how to make oars, and these are not super fancy oars. They're just something that you can put together very quickly, and um, they're very utilitarian. In this video, I'm going to talk about the selection of wood, laminating the wood, measuring, cutting and carving, and then putting a finish on the oars. First step is to select your wood. In our area, Douglas fir is the most popular wood, and so that's what I tend to use. I would prefer to use spruce, but we just can't get it in our area very easily. We also have cedar, and I've made a set of oars out of cedar before, but they're so light that the oars tend to float up out of the water and they're difficult to row with. Douglas fir seems to be a good compromise. The other thing that I like to do is use wood that is not kiln dried. Kiln dried wood is sometimes wood that may or may not be straight and the wood is stacked up and kiln dried. And as soon as it gets moisture back in it, it starts to warp out of shape again. The grade of wood that I like to use is clear vertical grain. And you can see um, this is a good example. It's got clear vertical grain and on both sides, you can rotate it around and see those nice, fairly tight grains. What I don't like to use is a clear vertical grain, but it's got a lot of run out. You can see that on this area right here. They only had two sticks of the clear vertical grain without run out yesterday. So I did have to get one piece with run out on it. And I will just go ahead and work with that. And what I can do is I can use this for the blades. So I have a minimal amount of woodworking to do where there's going to be a difficulty uh, working with the run out. You may also notice that some of these pieces are not totally straight. This one, for instance, has a little bit of a bend right here. I can work around that because the oars are going to be six feet long and these are eight foot sticks. So I'll find the straightest six feet of each of these two pieces that are going to be the shaft and then work around that. You'll notice that this one piece of wood has a pitch pocket right here on the corner and I determined that this is not going to be a problem because this is going to be the shaft of the oar and this will be cut off here. Um, we'll be taking the corners off. This will be part of the rounded part of the shaft so I can work around that. When I make oars, I do a lot of measuring and I have some tools that I've used over the years and I'll probably be using on this project. I have a six foot steel rule. I have a yardstick or three foot steel rule. I like the yellow because the black numbers really stand out. Um, I also use a combination square and you can use a tape measure. And the reality is you can use just a combination square and a tape measure for the whole project if that's what you want. I'm also going to use a pull saw uh, that has both the rip um, side and a cross cut side to it. And then I'm going to use a sharp pencil. I've determined that these two pieces of lumber are going to be the shafts and this one is going to be used for the blades. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure up um, 22 inches from the end that I'm going to cut off. And on the two shafts, we're gonna get half of a blade off of each one. So I'm measuring 22 inches and putting a mark. And then I'm going to need two more pieces for blades. So I'm going to take those out of this piece that has the run out on it. And I'll just go ahead and mark it at 22 inches. And then again at 44 and an eighth to account for the uh, width of the, the saw blade there. So I'm going to square those cuts off using a combination square. I'm using the pole saw with the cross cut side and I'm going to follow the guidelines. Okay, there we have our shafts and we have uh, the pieces that are going to make up our blades. The next step is going to be to go ahead and laminate those together. Now we're ready to start laminating. And you can see I've laid the wood out on the table here. Something to pay attention to besides Sadie's trying to help us out today is to look at the grain on the end. And so notice that the grain on this 
part of the blade goes up and down, then I'm going across ways, and then I'm back up and down again. I found that if I have all the grain going the same direction, at some point uh, in the history or life of this ore, I'll get a cupping in here. So I put them, I alternate the way the grain goes and then glue them together that way. My preferred glue is uh, Weldwood plastic resin glue, um, but really any exterior glue will work. Um, for this project, I'm gonna use Tight Bond 2 just in the interest of time and trying to get this uh, put together and, and then to dry a little bit quicker than what the plastic resin glue will do. But either glue will work for you. Once I have these lined up and I know where they're going to be, I will put them where they're going to go and then I just draw squiggly lines and I'll do three of them so that I remember a couple of things, which side goes where and then where back and forth it goes um, up on the shaft. So I'll just roll these off to the side and then spread some glue. I like to use something to spread it, a putty knife or a, uh, a acid brush or something like that. Uh, if you have a regular glue spreader, that works too. And I make sure every surface is covered. I use plenty of glue. Now is not the time to try and skimp and save on your glue. I also will take it and I'll put that on there and I'll rub it back and forth and then take it off and see what happens. And you can see that I didn't get a good coverage on there. So I'm going to have to put some glue on that as well. We don't want any bare wood showing. It's got to all be covered with glue. And I know that that's not going to cover on the other side. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. All right, now that I've applied all the glue, I'm just going to go ahead and clamp this together. I like to use bar clamps. You put it together, just give it a little wiggle back and forth. Make sure the tops are lined up properly. And then just apply your bar clamps. With this glue, you want to make sure you got squeeze out all along it. I'm going to roll these over, make sure I'm still lined up. Okay, you can see I have a nice amount of squeeze out on each side there. On both lines there, let's roll it over. Again, I have a good amount of squeeze out on both sides. I'll go ahead and take that off. That's going to continue oozing for a little bit until it settles down. I'm not going to get too worried about it. I can use a glue scraper when it's dry to get the rest of it off. Okay, we're going to leave it set overnight and then we will move on to the next steps. Now that the glue is dried, it's time to take the clamps off and then mark the centers. I typically use several different tools to mark the center lines. I made this center finder, um, which makes it very, very easy to locate the centers. The way it works is I just simply set it on the wood and I twist it until the two dowels engage, drop it down and then draw a little line. Um, to do the center line on the face of the oar, what I'll do is I'll mark the center line um, at the top and then again at the bottom. And I do that because this isn't exactly straight. If I lay a straight edge on here, you'll see that that's just off just a little tiny bit, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So I'll take this six foot straight edge and I'll just connect these two marks and then I will draw a line connecting them. Another tool I use is this center finding rule and it's made by Woodsmith and it has a zero in the center and then each 
inch outward is marked. So I can just take this and lay it down and uh, find the center very, very quickly. I made this template for the blade of the ore, and I actually took this from another ore that um, I had purchased in the store. Uh, you can easily make your own by taking a piece of paper, uh, folding it in half, lay out what you think the side, what the bottom is. People have different preferences for the bottom. Some people like them flat across here. I like mine with a little bit of a bend in it. Um, I marked the center line on it. You do it on a piece of paper, fold it in half, cut it out, open it back up, and then lay it down to make a pattern. And I've made this on a piece of plywood. So I can then just lay it down along the center lines that I have on the shaft here. It doesn't matter that this is a little bit wide. Um, you just line up your center lines and it'll be symmetrical. And I will take and draw the line there and then up along the side here and just follow it through all the way to the center line and do that on both sides. We're ready to cut the shape of the blade out now. Uh, we need to cut the curve at the bottom and then these two cuts at the top that go just to the shaft. So we'd come up to here to this joint. And this can be done any number of ways. Uh, sometimes I'll carve it if I'm making an ore completely by hand. Sometimes I'll use a jigsaw or a scroll saw or a bandsaw. Today we're going to use the bandsaw um, so we can get it cut very quickly. Now we have the shape of the paddle cut out, the blade down here. And of course, when we cut this off, we lost the center line. So I need to remark that. This is where this center finding tool comes in really handy because it just follows the curve and I don't have to worry about bending the rule around there. And you can see I've got the new line back on there again. Okay, now that I have the center lines back on, I'm going to start marking uh, the lines that I need to help me shape the blade to kind of taper it out front from the top to the bottom or from the top of the blade to the bottom of the blade and then from side to side. And I like to use a spar gauge and you can look these up on YouTube on how to make them, but they will basically give you the lines that you need. Another way to do that is to set your tri-square to seven sixteenths of an inch and then just draw that, draw that line at seven sixteenths of an inch from both sides. And that'll give you a good mark. Now that I have these marked, it gives me a guide. I can bevel from this center line to this edge line right here. And that'll end up with about a five eighths inch thick blade down at the bottom here. I'm also gonna taper it from here down to the line across here as well so that it's tapered in both directions. And that'll help lighten up the blade and make it easy, more balanced for rowing. While I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and mark the shaft. And again, using the spar gauge, which divides this so that I can go from four sides to eight sides and have them all equal. I'm gonna just go ahead and mark this so I have those marks as well. At this point, we're ready to start scraping all the glue off. And I'd like to have the ore very securely attached to something. So I have it clamped at this end of the bench with the, just a regular C clamp, and then I use my workmate to hold it. And this is, this is pretty secure. It just takes a couple of quick strokes with a scraper and that excess glue is off. Now we're gonna start planing the blade. And the first thing that we're going to do on the blade is we're going to plane from this junction right here down to the end. And that's that 7 16 inch line that I drew uh, down the line. And that's going to be planed flat from here down to the end. Typically, I would use a bench plane and a draw knife uh, for this step. But because I'm in a hurry on this one, I'm going to go ahead and use the power plane. power plane made pretty quick work of this. Um, I brought it almost down to the line here and I'm going to finish it off with a bench plane. Now I'm going to roll it over and do the other side. This looks pretty good right now. You can see I'm just about to the line from here up to here. We have a nice taper 
um, which actually lightened the blade up quite a little bit. Um, now we're going to do some more finish work on it, mainly in this junction right here. I'll need to redo this line that I've planed away on both sides so I can start working on this place here. Working on this joint right here, I like to use a uh, draw knife and this use this flex cut draw knife. It's super sharp and uh, really makes short work of uh, getting here. And the goal here is going to be to connect the lines from here to here. I'm just going to cut that off and taper it and just work my way just a little bit up the shaft. When you get back to where the, the lamination is, um, typically I'm going to have to turn around and come back the other way. And I just do it just for a little bit. At this point, I like to finish this off with the spoke shave and make the transition a little bit smoother. I've connected the lines on the bottom. I'm going to do it on the top plane. I found when I was planing the other side that the bench plane's a little bit faster for me and I get a much better finish. use the spoke shave to really clean up these lines and get a good solid octagon on the shaft. You can see now that all these sides are all equal distance. So this is ready to divide into sixteenths now. Now the way we measure this to divide it into sixteenths is simply to take a pencil and draw a line clear around the shaft about every six inches. So I'll just do that. The line doesn't have to be very clean or very straight. The goal now is to use the plane to knock this little edge off right here, all the way around those eight little edges, and the way you gauge how much to mark to knock off is to make sure that these lines that are left are an equal distance apart. So I'm going to just do a few swipes of the plane here so you can see. I'm going to do the other side, the other corner here. Now if you look right here, I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not, but you want the space between the lines to be about the same size as the lines are that are left. And you do that all the way along and that will bring it almost to a round shape. I'll do that now. And this is very, very quick process. You only have to do three or four swipes down each line to uh, bring it to the shape that it needs to be. And you can see I have a space, a line, a space, a line, a space, a line, all the way around. And that gives me the 16 sides. The shaft is almost darn near round at this point, and it's uniform for its whole length. The next tool I'm going to use in shaping the shaft is this Veritas Concave Spoke Shave. This is one of my favorite tools. I use this tool to remove all the rest of the pencil lines and all the tool marks. And by doing that, I'll have a perfectly round shaft. These oars were designed originally to be six feet long. And so if you remember, we cut 22 inches off 
of the end of an eight foot board and then laminated two of those onto the end. And that left us with an ore that's a little bit longer than six feet. So what I need to do at this point is I'm going to mark six feet and cut the ore down to the size. And it's about two inches over. And just to make that line nice and straight, I take a piece of paper and I wrap it around right at the mark and then just draw a line. With this cut to length, I'm getting ready now to put the handle on. And so I've made a jig for my table saw that will do a really nice job of that. Uh, but before I take it to the table saw, I want to get these little bitty ridges that are on here out. I will do some sanding using this piece of PVC pipe that's basically been cut in half. And I'll put a piece of sandpaper on there and then I will sand the shaft to make sure that it's nice and smooth and round to prepare it to put it on the table saw to cut the handle out. For this initial sanding, I'm going to use 60 grit sandpaper. So I have this jig set up on my table saw with a stop block that's about five inches back from the front edge of the blade. And then I'm using a feather board. The guide is set up so that it, the blade is going to take about 3 16 of an inch off of the edge of the uh, paddle shaft. You can see that I ran this through the table saw multiple times and the more you do it, the smoother this will be. Um, for me, this looks good enough at this point. Now I can sand it and it has a nice grip on it. It's just a little bit smaller than the shaft, but it has a nice shoulder as well. And it makes it very easy um, to uh, make your handle on the shaft. From here, basically all that's left to do is to sand the entire ore and then put a finish on it. And I will spare you the boredom of watching me do that. Um, I'll do another video that shows the finished set of oars, the pair of oars that I made with a finish on them. Um, so you can see what that looks like. Uh, but for now, I hope this you found this video helpful. If you did, leave a comment if you have thoughts about something I might have done a little differently or um, something that would have helped for you to see or ask any questions. I hope you found this useful.